So today we're going to continue looking around at some of the built-in functions that vPython has to offer. The next function we'll take a look at is the exponential function. So this is e to the x, Euler's special number that shows up in uh, bacterial growth rates and things like that. Um, we're going to take a look at this one. Let's decrease our range a little bit. There we go, make it a little more reasonable. Um, this is one of my favorite functions because its growth rate beats out almost every other function that you can make up. Of course, you can combine it with other functions to make it grow faster, but it has this incredible uh, growth rate. Um, it's always positive. It has this horizontal asymptote at zero, but then it grows up uh, toward infinity. Um, <clears throat> so if you ever needed the, uh, if you ever just needed the number e, of course, you would just use exponential of zero if you, if, if say you needed e in a calculation or something. Oh no, excuse me, not exponential of zero. What am I saying? Exponential of one. There we go. It's always one of those two numbers, right? Yeah, so there's your, there's your regular e value if you ever needed it uh, in a formula. Um, vPython also has a logarithm built in. Of course, the question you should always ask anytime you come across a computer working with logarithm is what is the base of the log? Is it log base e, log base 10, log base 2? Um, usually it's going to be log base e because that's, we call it the natural logarithm because that's the one that shows up in nature. I mean, we only use log base 10 because we have 10 fingers on our hands. If, if we uh, if we evolved um, 12 fingers on our hands, you know, we would be working in log base 12 most of the time. Let's hit control two, see if we can find out uh, which base this is in. Um, of course, log of zero is gonna give you a negative infinity no matter what kind of base you're in, so we'll just ignore that part. Um, log of one is always gonna give you zero. Let's see if we can find where E is. So E is 2.7 something. Uh, let's go up here. Log of e gives us a 1. So the log in vPython is a log base e, not a log base 10. Um, of course, there's a little trick you can do to get a log of any base. If you just take log base e and divide by the log of the base that you want, so say you wanted log base 10, you can just take log base e and divide it by the log of 10, and you'll get the log base 10. Um, let's go out to 10 so that we can see that this works. Uh, control 2. There we go. So now if I go to 10, I get a 1. So I'm in log base 10 now. So that's a neat little trick you can use um, for any log base that you want. Um, you, I mean, you could define another formula for it if you wanted to. You could define log 10 of x and just return log of x divided by log of 10. And then of course, if you wanted any log base, if you wanted log uh, base A of X, you could give it two arguments, right? You could then return uh, log of X divided by log of A. So what I could do here would be to say, I want log X base 10, delete this part, because I don't need that anymore. And then control two, lo and behold, I get the same graph. So, uh, you know, even though there's only a handful of functions defined, defining your own functions is, is pretty useful. And once you've defined these, you just copy and paste them, you know, from one code to the next, and you can make use of them however many times you need to. It's pretty great. So the next functions we're going to look at, you might not have seen too terribly much in a math class, but they're actually pretty useful in a lot of programming applications. The first one we'll look at is the ceiling function, C-E-I-L. Now this one's neat because it takes a number and rounds it up to the nearest integer. So if I graph this, it's actually pretty cool. It makes this staircase. So like, for example, for every number between five and six, right, there's an infinite number of real numbers between five and six, they're all going to round up to six because 5.17 gets rounded up to six the same way that 5.92 gets rounded up to six. Um, applications you might need this for is uh, if you're dealing with a lot of addition and subtraction and you're incurring a lot of um, numerical errors in your code and things are drifting away from their integer values, this is useful to kind of snap it to the next integer value that you need. Um, a similar one is the floor value. You can probably guess what this does. It rounds the number down to the nearest integer. So if I hit control two, 
Notice it looks the same, it's just that the staircase has been shifted a little bit. So here you get everything rounded down. So everything between zero and one gets rounded to zero. Everything between five and six gets rounded to five. Another way of thinking about this function is it performs a truncation, right? So it takes everything uh, after the decimal point and just removes it. Um, so it's truncating it to the, to the nearest integer. We've already seen this one in a previous video, but I want to show it here too. The round function rounds to the nearest integer. So again, it's going to be a staircase, but notice the stairs are now centered around the integer. So now you're going, uh, say, from 3.5 to 4.5 on this plateau, or from 4.5 to 5.5 on this plateau. So there are lots of different rounding schemes that vPython can, can perform for you. Another one that's very handy are the max and the min function. So max pulls out the maximum value from a list of uh, inputs. So you can have max of x comma three and it will return to you whichever is higher, x or three. So let's hit control two. So you notice for everything below three, the function returns three because three is bigger than everything from zero to three. And then afterwards it returns to you y equals x because now the input number is bigger than three. And you can give this function as many arguments as you want. Um, Serum, let's give it uh, x3, 2, 5, negative 10. So that's going to pick out the maximum of all of those. Now, of course, between all the constant ones, five is the max, so it's not going to bother with the rest of them. And then after five, it starts to increase. So you can have a whole slew of inputs there. It will give you the maximum. Same thing with the minimum function. It's going to pick out the minimum out of all of these. Let's hit control two. Now, of course, here the minimum is going to be negative 10 because my x is going from 0 to 10. Let's take out that negative 10 that's uh, ruining the fun for us on the graph. All right, hit Control-2. So here we go. Here we've got the minimum. So here x is less than everything else there, but then here 2 is the minimum of that set. So it flattens out there. So this is really useful when you've got a lot of variables changing and you need to pick out the, the maximum or the minimum among all of them. Let's see, a couple more that are useful. Um, vPython knows the factorial function. Now I'm curious to see what it does here because factorial is defined only in terms of integers, right? It's defined as the integer times the integer before that, times the integer before that, times the integer before that. I don't know whether it has a definition for non-integers. We'll find out. Oh, yeah, it must be an integer. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a change here. Let's change the step size to one so that we get integers. Control two. And lo and behold, uh, there we go. Now, of course, the factorial function grows pretty quickly. Um, let's put this down to four. And actually, just for this one, let's change this to a G dots instead of a G curve, since we're dealing with individual points that are trying to see the whole curve. Cool, so uh, zero factorial is one by definition. One factorial is one. Two factorial is two times one. Three factorial is three times two times one gives you six. Uh, let's, oh yeah, I need to, it doesn't do the, the last entry, it's, so in order to get four, you have to do 4.1. There we go, and then four factorial is four times three times two times one, or if you like, it's just four times three factorial, three factorial is six, six times four is 24. Lo and behold, up here we get our four factorial of 24. All right, there is one other function to look at, the combination function. Um, I'm going to have to read up on how that works. Uh, it's used in probability. Um, I use it about once every couple of years, so I'm gonna have to read up on how that works. I'll make a separate video about the combination function. Uh, but we've taken a look at most of the built-in functions that vPython has. I hope that's helpful to you. Um, as always, please feel free to leave me questions in the comments below or suggestions for future tutorials, and I would be glad to uh, respond to those in a future video. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.